Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, uh, today I'm going to share with you a little bit about this 26-inch do-all bandsaw. Now, uh, if you've been following my channel for a while, you, you know that I probably picked this thing up about two years ago. It was literally a barn find. I uh, found it in a farmer's barn uh, about an hour from where I live at. And uh, it was kind of in a, an open, well, it was partially open shed. It was partially enclosed on, I think, three sides open on the front side. It was an area where he pulled his tractor in to work on, and he had a little shop area in there. And when he bought this, his intent was he was going to use it on the farm shop. And uh, quickly found out, though, that it had a three-phase motor. He did not have three-phase power. So he, at one point in time, tried to swap the motors out or attempted to. He pulled the motor out of this one. Uh, took a few things apart, not too bad, uh, never did get a single phase motor in there and eventually after about 20 years he decided to sell it. That's when I came along, uh, the sucker, and uh, I bought it from him and brought it home. So a little bit about it, uh, it is, when I got it, mechanically it was not in terrible shape. Uh, it had been working whenever he took it out of service. Cosmetically, this thing looked terrible. Uh, the paint was just peeling on it. It had been uh, repainted several times throughout its lifetime. The saw was made in 1940, so it was quite old. And uh, it just really looked, looked terrible. Uh, I brought it into my shop, and it's been sitting around here for quite a while. And back during the summer when I had some help from a college student, uh, he started stripping the paint off of it. Uh, getting it ready to paint, did some body work to it. I had another student come in after he went back to college and a uh, high school student working after school. He kind of continued working on this, getting it ready for paint, and uh, we finally got a coat of paint on it. Um, as far as restoration goes, honestly, mechanically, again, I didn't have to do a whole lot. It was really just take things apart, clean them up, and uh, get them put back on. Uh, the only real thing I had to do was with the pulley that was missing off the motor and we showed a video of making that pulley and I did get all that worked out by the way. One thing about it, when I did pick it up and started cleaning it up initially, uh, it was quite evident that squirrels had literally built a nest inside the back and the column of this thing. It was full of leaves, it was full of sticks, it was full of acorns and pecans and just all kinds of things. Uh, that those squirrels were in there. They made a really, really big mess. In fact, it was quite gross. So I finally got it all cleaned out um, and they pretty much chewed up all the wiring on it. So uh, in the process of doing this, I completely rewired the whole machine. Uh, in fact, I totally redid the electrical work. At some point in time, they had taken the magnetic starter off of this and just put a stop start button up here. Uh, really wasn't right. So we kind of took it back and put where I've got a start stop button that goes to a magnetic starter. There's a transformer on there to give a control voltage as well as to take the power down from the light, uh, which uh, works now that we re rewired it. So uh, that was one of the things I had to do to it. Um, but other than that, really just cleaning it up and going. So I wanted to, we, I have not done a cut on this. What I thought we would do is I need to get the guides on it installed. I need to get a blade on here and we will try it out. Oh, one thing, notice the big hole here. Uh, it came with a blade welder on there, a grinder blade welder, which is a really nice feature on these bandsaws. Uh, unfortunately, the squirrels did quite a bit of damage to that whole unit, and uh, I haven't decided yet whether I'm going to try to uh, rewire that thing. It's, it's really not just plain wires. There's all kinds of uh, uh, heat elements and stuff in there for lack of a better word and I really I'm really, really reluctant to try to rebuild it because I just don't know enough about them but we may try or I may try to find a replacement one off of another bandsaw that's being junked out and stick in there but uh, right now we just got a hole there uh, everything else pretty much worked even the tachometer worked so uh, it, you know like I said it was really not in terrible shape let's uh, zoom in here let's get these guides installed and put a blade on here and see if we can make a first cut with it so this saw has a set of guides on the top and there's also a set kind of right down here in the bottom. I don't know if you can see that or not. We'll show you here in a minute the best we can. But uh, there's a little bearing in the back that the blade runs on. I probably need to get a new one for the, both the top and the bottom. Those turn, but they're a little bit rough. Uh, but we're going to try them out. And the way these work is, is these come with different sets of uh, 
blade are guides, and these guides are for different width blades. So this is for a half inch blade, which is what I'm going to put on there. Fortunately, uh, I was able to find a complete set of guides for this thing laying around the saw when I got it. So it came with all the guides, uh, which was really nice. Didn't have to go buy those. Uh, I got them from, what is it, eighth inch up to one inch, I think it was. So um, we'll just kind of put those in there. I'll adjust them once I get a blade in there. We'll get a blade in there and we'll adjust those. Same type setup down under the bottom. This one's going to be a little bit harder to see, but uh, I've got a couple of guide blocks that go down there as well, and we'll get those put in. Talking about these guides, uh, there's a little rack on the inside of the door uh, that you can put them all in. And again, I was very fortunate. I was able to dig up pretty much a complete set, although I'm missing a couple of the quarter inch ones here. I got one pair, you need two pair. I'll have to find those up, but I pretty much got all the other ones uh, that I need. So uh, that was a nice find uh, to find those. After I put in those half inch uh, guides, I decided to go with this 3 8 inch blade instead just to try things out with. And uh, I got this blade from Morse. Uh, you can see the specifications here for it. I always get people asking that information, so I like to show it. Uh, but this is a, basically a 3 8 inch blade, fairly uh, close tooth pattern, uh, which I like when you're free handing on a bandsaw like this. And uh, this is a fairly thin blade, so you could actually do some scroll work with it. Uh, if you were cutting a long straight line, you'd probably want to use a wider blade, but uh, a lot of times I'm, I'm doing different shapes and profiles, so I kind of like that. I'm gonna put this one on here to, to try it out. So let's, uh, let's get her installed. All right, let's get this blade opened up. And it's in pointing in the right direction, that's good. And we'll just come in here. We've got the throat piece out. Go across the top. Make sure we get behind this guard over here on the other side. Get these in between the guides. that, I think we can start tightening up the blade. So we'll just raise the, the top up here, get a little bit of tension on that blade. I'm looking, making sure I'm kind of still in the guides down here. Okay, we got a little bit of tension on it. What I like to do is just kind of bump that blade, make sure it's tracking right. Looks like it's tracking pretty good. You can adjust the tracking of the blade. There's a knob here on the front, which basically adjusts the tilt of this uh, top uh, wheel. And you can make the blade run in different places on there, depending on how you have that oriented. It's actually set pretty good right now it looks like uh, i may fine tune it i don't know it needs to looks like it needs to go back just a little bit so let me uh looks pretty good. Now I want to adjust my guides here. So I'm going to loosen this up and I'm just going to literally let that just kind of fall right down onto that blade to where it's just touching it. What these guides do is they just, that blade will fit right in between that little, little opening there and it just kind of keeps the blade from twisting. You want to just barely fit in there. It's not all the way back in there. Let me get it. Here we go. So you want just enough room for that blade to 
be able to go in there and again that'll keep it from twisting that helps you a bunch when you're doing scroll work and keeping your blade from drifting along we're going to do the same thing on the bottom down here uh, i'm not trying to get them real tight i just want them to be kind of snug up against that blade And I think I got my blades or my guides set. Put our throat piece back in here. Here we go. And I think we're ready to try it out to cut. Got my blade speed running about 225 surface feet per minute, which is about what's recommended for uh, this right here. And we'll just make a cut off here. stick we wanted to cut a radius There we go. One bandsaw up and going. The thing I noticed this little piece here, there's actually an air pump in here that runs when you run it. And this is actually spurting out a little bit, a little small stream of air. And it just clears the chips out of your way while you're cutting. Uh, so if you got a line scribed on there that you're cutting to, the chips out of the way. There we go. I really should have lowered that guide down a little bit closer to that. Uh, you always want to run your guide right there as close as you can for whatever thickness you're cutting. Uh, just makes life a little bit easier on you. And also helps cover up that blade where you can't get into it. Here's a uh, pro tip on what not to do on one of these bandsaws, and this just comes from personal experience. Um, I'm almost reluctant to share this because it was stupid. I did this back when I was about 18, 19 years old. I was working in the machine shop at the time, and I had to cut a piece of round stock on the bandsaw instead of going over to the uh, uh, cut, cut off bandsaw. So well, I'll just cut it real quick over here on the, on the vertical band saw and I came in here and I was pushing right just like that right there well the teeth grabbed the stock rolled it and pulled my thumb right into the blade and uh, you can still see it I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a scar right across there I cut it all the way down to the bone into the bone I didn't cut it off uh, but I had a nasty nasty wound uh, fortunately it healed up fine but um, don't do that you know if you're pushing Keep your fingers away from the blade. If you need to push right behind it, get you a piece of wood, a push block to push on it. This saw actually has a sliding piece for making straight cuts. I've got to get it cleaned up and on here. It's not on here right now, but that will actually make doing cross cutting a lot easier uh, on this saw once I get that uh, installed. This saw has a uh, tachometer on there to tell you the, the blade speed. This is the feet per minute, surface feet per minute of your blade. I got it in low gear right now. It's got two speeds on it, so 225 if you're in the high range on the gearbox, it's 900. Uh, this does have a variable speed system on it, so when I crank the pulleys, As you can see, when I crank the pulleys, you can vary the speed of your blade uh, very easily there. It does bounce around a little bit, but you get a good idea of what kind of uh, surface speed you're running. And uh, I didn't do anything to this other than just clean it up. 
it was uh, actually in working condition when I got it. This saw's also got this neat little uh, selector dial up on the front to kind of help you figure up the, what kind of blade you need to run. So, you know, for just regular steel, we're going to use this right here. It says speed 200 to 300 surface feet per minute. I think the, the, the back of the box over there was saying about 250, so it's in that range. And uh, it's recommending a 10 to 14 tooth uh, blade. Now, keep in mind that uh, when this saw was made in 1940, they didn't have a lot of the modern uh, bi-metal blades and carbide tip blades and stuff like we do now. So this would be for just regular, you know, carbon steel blades, which you can still get and still use. Uh, but I would definitely refer to uh, whatever documentation for your saw blade that you're getting so that you get it right. But uh, this is still a handy little feature to have on here. Uh, and you got all kinds of different things in there. Hard rubber, pipe, porcelain, nitroloys, nickel steel, nickel silver, uh, manel sheets, manel metal, mica, metal wood, mild steel, um, keeps on going malleable iron, got cast iron on here, um, all kinds of different options. There's your cast iron. So really kind of neat. Uh, some of these things actually have some really cool things on this particular one doesn't, but I've seen a bunch of these do-alls that actually have meteorite listed as a material <laughs> to cut. Now, I don't know if a lot of people are cutting meteorite or not. Here's some speeds for aluminum, et cetera. So anyway, nice little handy uh, thing to have on there. And uh, you probably won't go wrong with that even today. If anything, you might be running a little bit on the slow side. Uh, I would definitely want to be on the slow side than on the high side and, and burn a blade up. So there you go, guys. Uh, introducing you to my new tool for the shop that is now in usable shape and something that we can be using. And I'm really, really happy to have this out here. This is a machine I've been needing for a long time. And uh, just uh, like I said, I've had it in the shop for almost two years now and, and just haven't been able to use it until now. But I am really glad to have this. This is going to be a valuable asset to me and allow me to do some things that I've had to go elsewhere to get done uh, up until now. Very excited to have it done. Real quickly, big shout out to Miles McDonald as well as Brock Fitzgerald. Those are the two uh, boys that have been kind of helping me out in the shop. Miles is the college student. Uh, Brock is the, is the high school student and they've both contributed greatly toward this project. I cannot take credit for most of the work that was done on this. Uh, I, I kind of told them what to do, pointed them in the right direction and uh, they got in here and did the muscle work and the grunt work, the stuff that I really didn't want to have to do myself. Uh, and at the same time, hopefully teaching them a little bit about machine restoration. They're most interested in that type of stuff. So uh, uh, anyway, I do want to just give a shout out to those two guys because they really did the bulk of this. And I know I didn't do a whole lot of videos on the restoration of this saw and that's because they were working on it. And often, very often, they were working on it when I wasn't even in the shop. I was at work or uh, someplace else. So uh, it was really difficult for me to get a lot of video footage on this particular project. But there you go, a uh, 26 inch do-all bandsaw made in 1940, still going strong. And I'm uh, very happy to have her in here as a useful tool in my shop now. As always, guys, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit that bell icon up there once you do so that you get notifications when new videos are posted. And comments as well as thumbs up are appreciated as always. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video. As always, thanks for watching.